So welcome to our workshop, uh, our second workshop of Enpro. Um, today I will give you a little preview on version 3.0. We will try to discuss maybe even a few features and I will just give you a live demo. What are the new features uh, coming with the new version and also what we are planning to do in the next uh, weeks and months. Um, so I prepared a few slides and then I will go directly into the software and, and show you um, how it looks like, how is the current state of the development. And um, yeah, then we can also go into the discussion if you have questions. Um, so yeah, but I also put this information on the slides. So let me share my slides. Mm -hmm. And for the ones who are just joining, uh, happy welcome. Um, I think there will be some people joining over the next minutes. Um, let me share my screen. And let me share my slides uh, at the beginning. So a uh, few information up front. So as I said, the workshop is uh, recorded. Um, and a few organizational notes on this. Um, please, if you, if you have questions or your feedback about what I'm presenting or about our software, uh, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, I will try to answer questions from the chat during our, our meeting also. Uh, if I do not answer them, uh, don't be uh, too demotivated. Uh, we will go through all of the chat notes uh, after the meeting and uh, have a very close look at what you wrote. So if you have a, like a feature request or you say we need this and this here, uh, please put it in the chat. We will uh, read this very carefully after the, um, after the uh, workshop as well again. Um, but uh, we will also have some slots for uh, questions uh, from your side, and I will answer some questions in the chat, depending on how many questions they are posted. Uh, we will record the uh, workshop, that's what I already said. If you need the slides, you can write me an email afterwards, and it will take uh, more or less 60 minutes um, to uh, for our workshop today. Um, so that's uh, the boring stuff. Let's go to the interesting things. Uh, we have a few points here. I will give uh, one or two slides on the motivation, uh, then give you the live, live demo on this tool where I go through uh, all of the new features and, and uh, give you an overview. Um, and then there are some additional notes and some things that I would like to discuss with you also. Um, and I would like to start, um, and let's see if it works well today, uh, with a Mentimeter um, a survey. So I would, I would like to see uh, who is participating today. So uh, feel free to go to menti.com and um, put in this access code. Um, and then you can, um, well, let me see if I already started it at the right, it's, it's the right slide right now. Let me see. Oh, no, I need to present that first. Um, da, 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 da. I think now you can enter the Mentimeter page website. Um, and you are able to draw your location into the map because I would like to see, okay, where are the people coming from um, and uh, what is the sector to have some more information about you so I can maybe uh, fine tune a little bit the um, the, the wording and the things that I'm explaining later on. Um, if you go to the Mentimeter page, it's not so intuitive. I, I um, saw it before. You can go on the right hand side. There you have a smaller map and there you can put your um, your point on the map where you are. Um, so not on the I think not on the left hand side, more on the right hand side. There you can put the point and then you can hit, I think, submit the submit button. And then um, you will appear on the map. And I know that there are some people also from uh, outside of Europe. Sorry about that. <laughs> I put the Europe map here. Um, I know there are, there was some interest from Australia, from Canada and so on. Uh, but it's, of course, it's also not so convenient with the time slot today uh, in the afternoon of the European time. Um, but yeah, so most of them are from, from Europe. And we see that Netherlands is a good place. Belgium, I think, as well. Uh, France, we had some participants from France. Yeah, I saw that before. Uh, Sweden, great. United Kingdom, Ireland, that's great. So many, many different slots here today. Um, and um, yeah, so most of them actually from, yeah, maybe it's, I'm not sure, the Germany or maybe even uh, Netherlands is very close here on the map. But anyway, um, I have two more uh, questions uh, for for you at the at the beginning. I will go to the second slide. 
Um, so which is the sector that you are coming from? Um, in engineering office, consulting, I think that's a large part, energy utility, real estate industry, uh, component manufacturer, maybe heat pump manufacturer, I'm not sure if there's someone from that, uh, and university. I know we have also uh, quite a few people from the academic world here in this uh, workshop, which is also great. Um, so yeah, that's that's more or less as I expected it. Uh, most of them from engineering offices as well as from the academic world. That's good to see. Um, and I think you can, um, yeah, just uh, just continue if you want to. Um, and the la last slide for the get to know part. Um, I would like to know, do you already use Npro? That's also interesting for me because then I don't need to explain the old features and can more focus on the, the new ones. So um, please give me an indication if you are already using Npro or not. Maybe you use it uh, regularly or not so often. So yeah, the largest part is here and there. Maybe try the demo version or try it in the past. Okay, that's great. So I should not. Uh, skip the the uh, introduction here and and explain a little bit uh, from scratch. All right. Um, so yeah, perfect. So now I have a good Im impression. I will go now back to my slides and um, go to the uh, first uh, content slide here. So uh, to give you an overview, um, and Pro was founded 2022 uh, with our first version uh, released in summer 2022. Um, it was already a nice and decent version, um, but um, yeah, of course things were missing. Uh, so we had a, a major release also in October, November 2023 with the version 2.0, where we had uh, many new features also. There was PVT modules, geothermal bowl sizing module, so many uh, different features that were integrated into the version 2.0. Um, and uh, that was a larger update. Um, and um, from there to today, uh, we uh, focused on uh, another larger update uh, for the version 3, and that was the main part is integrating this uh, map functionality so that you can represent your uh, network, the heat network on the map and also the buildings and make the um, yeah, calculation more detailed, but also, of course, like more visual and, and more nice to, to, um, to visualize the results and so on. Uh, today we are here with the beta version. Uh, I will show that later. Um, the full version, uh, we plan it to have it online end of September, beginning of October. Uh, so not far from today, uh, more or less like four or five weeks. Um, then we will uh, release the official uh, version, which is then fully tested and with all the features that we wanted. Um, and um, But uh, I will give you later also the link to the beta version and you can try it then on your own as well. Already the beta version. Um, so uh, I don't want to talk too much uh, about the slides. I just want to go into the uh, live demo here. Um, so give me a second to jump into the browser again. Um, and what I will show you uh, right now is my uh, own development version. So that's really the latest uh, state of the uh, development. Um, you will find uh, online later with the beta version, like the state of like one and a half weeks ago. So not everything that you see here is, is in there, but almost everything. Um, and uh, this is really like the very latest uh, development version of, of uh, NPRO. So if you create a new project, uh, the ones who already use NPRO, they know the screen here, it didn't really change a lot. Um, you can select here district as a project type. It's also possible to calculate single buildings, also calculate energy hubs and so on. But uh, the district is the most important part uh, for this demo at least. Um, you can select the location um, that's uh, only related to the weather data. Um, if you want to change the weather data and so on, you can do this here by changing the location. And you can uh, have a pre-selection of the uh, network type or the system type. Um, like a normal district heating network, that's maybe most of the cases, uh, like 60, 70, 80 degrees Celsius, but it can also be like these low temperature networks, uh, 5G DHC, for example, um, where there are different um, parameters set. Um, so I click now on create new project. 
And then um, we end up with this um, open street map uh, map here in the background. Uh, and you can go to any location worldwide. Uh, it works very good for, for European countries, of course, but also for other countries. We have a lot of data in the open street map worldwide. And the idea is that you uh, can then say, OK, I would like to plan a district. And um, then you can go to the uh, top here on the right uh, and say define area for data retrieval, because you can then take uh, get the building data from this uh, OpenStreetMap um, uh, database. So if you go through uh, around such a district with some buildings and then click on uh, load building data, and then it will um, load the building data from, um, from the OpenStreetMap database and draw it into the map. Um, so that's basically the uh, building shapes, the building geometries, as well as the uh, streets. Um, and because the streets are, of course, the uh, possible um, routes for the network. And then um, you can uh, connect buildings to the network. So you can say, OK, I would like to, to uh, add some of the uh, buildings maybe to the network. You can uh, select them here with the right uh, mouse. You can select multiple buildings. Um, you can then click on Connect to Heat Network. But you can also click here on this uh, quick button, so to say, uh, connect all buildings, um, and then all of the buildings will be connected to the network. Um, so that's the first step that you can use if you have uh, an existing district uh, that you find on the map already. Um, if you have a greenfield um, uh, situation where you do not have building data on the map, you can also upload your own uh, data and we can discuss it maybe later in more detail. So there are different um, building formats, uh, sorry, file formats that you can upload, uh, shape files, GeoJSON and so on, where you can then place your own building uh, on the map. What you can also do is um, you can also draw buildings into the map. If you say, OK, there's another building that should be uh, connected, uh, then you can just draw it into the map. Um, and then, uh, for example, say that this should be the energy hub um, of the network. Um, you can then go to the menu here and say set as energy hub. And then this building would be the energy hub. Um, before I say before I click on uh, calculate district, I would like to show you what you can um, configure on the building level. So if I click on one of the buildings, uh, you can change all the parameters of the buildings. And uh, you can here go to edit building and then there's another window that opens up. Um, there's a building name that you can uh, define, the floor area that you can define, the building type. We have many predefined building types already in NPRO with user profiles, for example, um, as well as subtypes, uh, especially for Germany. We have a very detailed list for other quantities, not that detailed, um, but this uh, subtype can be used, for example, to load default data for residential building in, in Germany, KFW uh, um, standard. Um, and then you can click on insert default values. And then you get some uh, space heating demands, domestic hot water demands uh, for this uh, specific building type. Um, and as I said, in other countries, more, more or less, we only have this, um, this, um, this global uh, building type, so residential or hotel and so on, but not these uh, subtypes, um, or at least not so many subtypes. Uh, for Germany, it's a bit more um, uh, detailed. Um, if you click on insert, insert default values, it will be uh, put here into the input fields, and then you can change it again, of course, if you want to. Um, we have here the space heating demands and domestic hot water demand. And you can yeah, configure really a lot of uh, different settings here. If you have the heat load, you can place the heat load. If you have the annual demand, you can also put the annual demand uh, in, in megawatt hours, for example, if you have it um, and yeah, define what uh, demand you have. Um, and then if you um, let's let's see what I placed here. Um, if you then click on calculate demand profiles, you will see that the demand profiles are calculated with an hourly resolution that's based on the weather data, based on the data set for the ambient air temperature and so on. Um, and then this will be used for the um, overall district calculation later. Um, you have also cooling options, electricity, so space cooling, uh, e-mobility profiles and so on. They are not as detailed as the space heating demands, but uh, you can also use the, the cooling and electricity profiles. 
Um, on the bottom, you have on the bottom you have some um, information about the energy system. So um, if you have a booster heat pump, for example, in the building, you can also activate this. For a normal distributed network, we just have a heat exchanger, so you don't need to activate anything here. Um, I would just go with the uh, default values. Um, and now what I also wanted to show you is on the building uh, details, there's another small button here. Um, you can also see which building data comes directly from OpenStreetMap. So, uh, for example, the information about the city, the country, uh, the roof shape even, and also the street in this case um, is coming from the OpenStreetMap uh, database. And we will also try to integrate at least um, other sources that you can directly load more and more data about the buildings when you uh, create this shape for the district. All right. Um, so if you define the buildings, uh, then you can um, uh, you can go to the last step and define the network uh, parameters. Um, so and there are three buttons here on the top, uh, bottom. So the heat network settings. If I go to this first part here, then you can say, okay, what's the network temperature? It can be a constant value, supply and return temperature, but it can also be a sliding profile, or you can also upload your own profile if you want to. Uh, we have different uh, design methods uh, to do the sizing. Uh, you can activate the pressure gradient as a design criteria for the uh, pipe sizing. You can use uh, the diversity factor, uh, different um, formulas for the diversity factor, um, and also yeah, change heat carrier fluid and so on. So these are the most important uh, parameters on the uh, network side. And then here you see, for example, the diversity factor uh, that you would now use here, as well as the uh, temperature for the network and the ground temperature. Uh, there are some hydraulic settings, which are also important, uh, at least for the pressure calculation. Uh, so you can say what are the um, what is the uh, pressure loss in the substation, for example, what's the pressure loss in the energy hub. Um, if you have decentral um, cooling demand or like a prosumer building, um, you can also play uh, with the last option here. So you can say, okay, how do we want to feed in the waste heat from, from a building that has a cooling demand? Um, there are different options um, that you can choose here, supply to return uh, pipe, for example, or uh, boost supply pipe. So there are different options that you can use here for the calculation. Um, yeah, and the last part, uh, it's also very important here, the pipe parameters. Um, you can say, okay, what kind of uh, network do I want to um, plan? Is it uh, a steel uh, pipe that I would like to install? Is it a plastic pipe maybe? Um, single or twin pipes, there are different uh, possibilities to choose from. And in case that you are installing a fifth generation distributed and cooling network, you can also use these uh, uninsulated plastic uh, pipes. Um, and of course, then there are different um, calculation methods for every pipe type. Um, we also have a library where you can choose uh, some uh, predefined buildings from different manufacturers. Then this table would um, update and then uh, you can yeah, use the default values from the manufacturers or you can directly put your own values if you want to. And there's also a little button here, change pipe costs. Um, I would like to show this as well. If you click on this one, um, because for the economic analysis later on, you need the costs, of course, for the network as well. Um, you can uh, play with this and you have a table here on the right hand side where you see the, the diameter as well as the pipe and, and trench costs so for, this, for the installation. Um, and there are some predefined cost sets also. Um, so you can um, use like conventional network in a rural area or in an urban area. So we have different cost sets that you can insert here for the, for the pipes. Um, all right, and now I showed many parameters, but let's see uh, what it it's actually doing with the uh, district calculation. I hope I didn't uh, mess up the parameters, so it will just uh, calculate the uh, all the buildings in the first step, and then the network sizing in the second step, and also um, uh, the simulation of the of the states in the network. Um, and here we can see, okay, what is what are the uh, diameters of the uh, different pipes? Um, and we can visualize many different things now here on the right hand side. So um, if we want to, uh, for example, uh, visualize the pressure loss, uh, we can go to pressure loss um, and see, okay, uh, which pressure gradient do we have in the different network sections? 
Um, the flow velocity can uh, be visualized. We can also visualize the heat line density. Um, this could be like an indication, okay, which parts of the network have a heat, high heat line density uh, and should be uh, connected to the network and maybe which building should not be connected to the building, uh, to the network. And on the other hand, we can also visualize the buildings. Uh, so if you want to visualize, for example, the total heat demand of the buildings, you can also do that um, here. And you can also, for example, uh, let's see, we can also visualize the heat load uh, in kilowatt. Um, so many different options that you can um, visualize in the map directly. Um, in addition to that, we can uh, go here to the bottom and um, have a look at the overall KPIs of the uh, simulation. Um, so we see here in this uh, table, um, so in the summary table, what's the space heating demand of all the buildings, what's the domestic hot water demand, um, what's the total heat demand of the district, um, and then how much heat is coming actually from the network. In this case, for a normal fourth generation heat network, it's of course the same number. Um, and then we have some heat losses that's calculated from the pipe lengths and the diameters and the ground temperature. And then we have the uh, generation, the heat demand at the energy hub. So how much heat do we need to um, put into the network? And here we have the uh, profiles. Um, so what's the total heat demand, space heating and domestic hot water as one profile, um, as well as the um, profile at the energy hub. Um, it looks similar, but of course here in the second um, profile, we have the losses as well as the diversity factor included. Um, and then we see, okay, which uh, heat demand do we need to cover with the central um, plants with the, with the energy hub. Uh, we have some more information about the network um, that we just calculated. So we get information about the length of the network, uh, the water mass, the water volume, heat line density again at the energy hub. We also get an estimation if that's a good number or not. Um, and uh, also some numbers about the, the pressure and the pump work, um, what uh, we would, we would uh, need to cover um, from the electricity side. Uh, you can always download the profile. So for example, the heat loss profile is visualized here on the bottom. Uh, you can always download them as Excel sheet, also the network temperature, and also all the um, demand profiles of the buildings can be downloaded. Um, so um, it's always, I would say, you can download everything, uh, everything that is important for the uh, calculation. Um, and that's what I would also like to show. Uh, there's a little download button here. Um, so you can get a building list. Um, so a list of all the buildings that are connected to the network um, and then say, um, okay, what, um, um, what, is the, uh, what are the different buildings, what's the floor area of the buildings, what's the total heat demand, and so on. So many, many KPIs that you can then extract as an Excel sheet. Um, and what you can also download, and that could be also interesting for some people, um, is a pipe list. So um, all the different sections of the network are then put into one Excel sheet. And in the Excel sheet, you can then see, okay, uh, what's the diameter of the different sections of the network, what's the length, uh, diversity factor, pressure loss, and so on, all the important KPIs. And there's also a summary page um, where you get the uh, costs also. So on the summary page, we have the, um, it's basically all the sections are grouped by the diameter. And then you see uh, what is the total length, for example, for all the pipes with a diameter of 80. Um, and what are the uh, costs of this um, of this group? So um, that's important for us to give you the opportunity to download as much as possible um, that you can also go with these results into your own uh, calculation tools or some additional calculations that you would like to do. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the first part that I would like to show you. And that's the main, the most important part um, because that's uh, the new part for the version three. Um, of course, now the question is, okay, what about the energy hub? Um, we now calculate the profile, the load profile at the energy hub. And uh, we can now go to the um, energy hub page here on the left-hand side. So that's normally the second part of the calculation. And then you can decide, okay, which technologies would you like to choose for, for covering the demand? And we have here the uh, heat demand, um, that's the demand of the network. We have some electricity demand, that's the pump work. 
uh, that we need to cover. And then we can decide, okay, what are the technologies that we would like to choose? Uh, for example, uh, geothermal uh, boreholes with a heat pump uh, plus a peak load boiler. That would be one possible option, but you can really play around with it and, and combine many different uh, heat sources that you have in this, um, in this matrix here. And um, the optimization will then uh, configure the optimal, the cost optimal system from that. And if you just take this here as an example, um, you can go into the details and define all the uh, parameters for the for the photovoltaic. For example, you can say, okay, what's the area available? What's the what's the angle? What's the module type? And so on. So many many different settings that you can set. Um, and then um, you can also put some numbers for the economic KPIs, so electricity price, gas price, um, and so on. And um, from this information, so the load profile, the technology, the efficiencies, COP, and so on, um, the system will then, um, or the optimization will then determine the cost optimal system. And let's see what it uh, calculates now. Probably a peak load boiler with a base load for the geothermal part. Um, yeah, that's what we see here, like a um, gas boiler with, uh, with, for the peak load and then geothermal for the, for the base load with a an, with an, uh, heat pump, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you can go even further and say, okay, that's a, that's a good um, design for me, for example, and say, uh, I would like to go into the simulation. That's always the second part. Um, so the first part is the design, the sizing, and the second um, step is then the simulation. And then you get all kinds of um, KPIs and uh, visualizations um, about the um, about the system, like the, like the profiles and so on. Um, yeah, this overview here, like a, a energy flow chart, so to say, um, how much heat is coming from the boiler, how much from the geothermal part. Um, you can visualize it for different um, um, seasons for the summer. For example, we only have geothermal and only a tiny bit of, of gas boiler makes sense of course and um, then here on the um, on the bottom you can visualize different things the heat balance for example um, how much is coming from the boiler in which months and you can also go into the details because all the calculation steps are always hourly values uh, hourly profiles um, so we can really see okay when is uh, the system uh, operated in which uh, and, and how yeah um, you can download time series as an Excel sheet. You can go into the details, see, okay, um, you get the hourly profiles for all the generation units. Um, and you can also, that was one of the new parts of version two, um, that you can um, go into the details for the geothermal calculation and calculate, for example, how many balls do you need? Uh, in this case, we really have a very high load on the balls. Uh, we see it here on the, on the graph that we're extracting a lot of energy from there. Um, and then you see, okay, how many balls do I need for to calculate to cover this demand? So I don't want to go into the details about the energy hubs. It's like very similar to the version two already. Um, the new part is really the district part, um, but I just want to show you the last page as well. Uh, there's a go to result page button here on the bottom. And um, there you can uh, click on uh, economic results, for example. I would like to show you that. Um, because there you get um, really the economic analysis, so the costs for the network, the costs for the PV, for the geothermal uh, boreholes and so on, are aggregated to um, the most important KPIs um, according to the discounted cash flow method. And then you can see, okay, uh, which heat price do I need to have a um, system that is economic um, viable? And um, then you see, yeah, the net present value and the amortization period in this case is nine years. And um, yeah, you can play around with all the costs and you can also change the costs here directly and see, okay, um, with which assumptions do I have a, a good system and which uh, prices do I need to charge for the building owner, so to say, to have a system that uh, works for me. Um, there are many more details here on the bottom uh, where you can go into it and, and see, okay, what's the, what's the electricity price, electricity costs, and so on. So we always try to uh, list everything that we have from the simulation that you can really um, understand, okay, how are the values um, calculated. And you can also change all the parameters of the calculation. Um, so, yeah, um, now I think I can go to... Um, 
There's one one thing more, but I don't show this. I think in this demo you can do a scenario comparison. Um, that's also possible and very interesting. I think um, I'm not totally sure because I uh, it's my development version. I think it's not working. I'm not sure if it's working right now, uh, but we can try maybe. Um, so if you click on scenario comparison, um, you can say duplicate current scenario. And then it will make a copy of what we just calculated. So um, we just calculated this geothermal simulation together with the uh, with the peak load boiler. And in another scenario, you could say now say, okay, maybe I don't want to connect these net uh, these buildings to the network. Then you can click on disconnect from heat network, and then um, you can ch change the the system and the network. You choose another um, pipe parameter set, for example. And then do the calculation again, and um, then, for example, also activate different technologies on the energy hub side. So let's take some all electric uh, system with an air source heat pump here, an electric heater, and then you can go uh, to the sizing and the simulation again. And on the last page, you can then compare different systems. And that's really, uh, I think, a large benefit that you can really uh, change the system configuration very easily get a new sizing of the electric heater in this case, of the air source heat pump um, to the simulation and then um, have different uh, scenarios that you can compare and maybe uh, show the decision uh, maker for the decision which system should you go for. Um, so that's, but that's really a basic, uh, or not, that's not basic, but it's very uh, um, similar to the previous version. Uh, there you have this uh, scenario comparison as well can then go to scenario comparison here again. And now we have um, scenario number one, which is the geothermal calculation for four minutes ago. Um, and uh, the new scenario number two, um, maybe I should rename it, but it's just scenario one and scenario two. Um, and then you can uh, see, okay, what are the differences? Uh, what's the levelized cost of heat? Scenario two, scenario number one. And uh, also have a look at the economic results so what are the um, KPIs here? What's the investment for the different scenarios and which uh, what is the best the better system? All right, um, that was the, the live do demo. I, I kept the uh, results section and the energy up uh, section a bit uh, short because that's the most important uh, part here, the, the network visualization and the simulation of the network. Um, and I hope I didn't forget any important parts. I think not. So um, I will just keep it like this and go back to my slides. Um, and yeah, go go one uh, step more. Um, I will try to have a look at the chat now uh, and see if I uh, can answer some of the questions. If you have a question right now and you would like to uh, ask it directly, um, I think we have a lot of but uh, many participants today. If you like, uh, you can uh, raise your hand and uh, you can ask your questions directly. Um, otherwise, put it in the chat and I will try to answer some of them uh, right now. And then I will show some of the um, of the last slides as well. Um, so let me see what I find here. Um, so <laughs> there's one question I would uh, would be interesting. Yeah, is that a question? Is is uh, possible to configure the cost uh, cost parameter today? It's nearly impossible to get valid data about costs. Yeah, that's a very important part. Um, so I think with this version number three, we added many many predefined cost data sets. For example, for networks, and we also refined a little bit mm -hmm. the, the default values for the costs. Um, but it's it's true that it's not easy to get really good uh, cost data. So at the end, it's kind of a user decision, of course, what you put in as the um, euro per kilowatt, for example, for an air source heat pump. We try to support the user as much as we can also in future updates to let you know directly, OK, where can I get the data and what is a valid date? Uh, was it, what is a, a valid cost uh, parameter for it? So that's a very crucial point because at the end, even if you have a very good energy simulation, you need to multiply it with some cost factors. And if the cost factors are not good, you end up with a cost analysis, which is not accurate. So we try to push also this direction. Uh, it's not probably it's not perfect right now, but we try to give you as much help as uh, we can uh, within the tool. Um, 
So uh, what else do we have? Let me have a look. Uh, okay, that's not too much. Okay, that's good, fine. Um, so different fuels um, for the for the boiler. That's also a good point. Uh, right now you can uh, choose directly natural gas, uh, biogas, biogas as well as biomass. Um, but um, we will also extend that a little bit so that you can actually define your own fuel for the boiler. Um, and then, um, yeah, define whatever you want to define for the for the fuels. Um, what information can we upload uh, from GIS JSON format? So that's a very good part. Um, thank you for this question. I will maybe show that in the um, in the tool directly. I will try to share my screen again and jump into the tool. Um, so if I let me see, um, I will just. Um, so yeah, let, let, let me let me open the window. So if you click on upload GIS data, you have uh, multiple options how you can upload your data. Um, and there's a drop down here, uh, which is called file type. So if you say I have a new project where are no buildings um, on the uh, on the map already. Um, then you can choose from these file types here. So Excel sheet, CSV file, J uh, GeoJSON file, GeoPackage or shape files. And um, you can upload the uh, files and then um, uh, then there will be a dialog which asks you to map the parameters that are in the files to the parameters of NPro. Um, so um, if you have GeoJSON, GeoPackage or shape files, then you have some geometry data for the buildings in the file, hopefully. Um, and maybe you have also some other properties like heat load, something like this. Uh, and then we will, uh, then you can um, match the heat load parameter to the uh, parameters of NPro, which is also called something like heat load. Um, and this is the opportunity how you can upload your building data. So the shapes, the geometries as um, as well as the properties of the buildings. Um, if you have existing buildings already in the map, so like this here, for example, and maybe you have an Excel sheet where you have some additional data, um, like maybe an address column um, with some with some additional data for the buildings, like the area and the, the heat load, then you can um, also upload this uh, Excel sheet. And then we will map according to the address column uh, we will map the other properties, so the other parameters like area of the building and the heat load um, to the existing buildings that are already in the map. So there are actually there are many different options. When I developed that, I, I found out there are many different uh, possibilities how you can upload data. And we have right now these two options. So creating new buildings with a, with a geometry, with a georeferenced file, or you can also enrich the data of the buildings that are already in the map. So yeah, but there's a very good point. Um, I will also address it in in the one of the slides uh, in the later slides. Um, uh, but maybe I can mention it right now already. Uh, if you use this uh, functionality, it works from already many different cases, but probably not for all of them. So because this uh, GeoJSON files look different in yeah, they have different shapes and so on, different properties. Um, and uh, if it's not working for your case, I would encourage you to send me your file, maybe, or maybe a small snippet of the file um, that we can um, also test it with your file because we would like to refine this import function that it, uh, it's work really working for 99% of the files out there. Um, so we can really learn from your cases where it's maybe not working. Um, so yeah, this was a very good question. Let's oof, jump back to the uh, to the chat. Um, da, 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 da. Um, ah, now there are many questions. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, okay, da, 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 da. that's the that the number of uh, maximum buildings that you can import. I will also show that on one of the slides. There's a limitation right now for the beta version. Um, and uh, how is the network path uh, calculated? That's also a very good question. Um, so is it like an optimization um, or not? And uh, it's kind of an optimization. So when you draw all the possible lines into the map um, of the of the network, um, we will then go into the, um, yeah, we will basically calculate the minimum spanning tree. Um, so it will 
finds the network that has the lowest, uh, the, the smallest length, basically. And so it will basically optimize the length of the network. Um, and that's how you, um, how we do the calculation if there are multiple different routes possible. Um, is it possible to upload uh, huge districts? Uh, huge districts uh, with a lot of decentralized geothermal sources. Uh, right now, um, it's it's meant that you have one geothermal field. You can simulate one geothermal field, and that would be like that would be considered the energy hub. Um, but we are planning to extend that uh, because we see that uh, there are yeah many cases, of course, where you have different geothermal fields that you would like to consider into one project. And I think that's one of the things that we would like to develop in this uh, future versions. Um, so uh, with settled parameters, how far are you from real projects? Yes, that, <laughs> that's a, a very good question, of course, as well. Um, we have a lot of feedback over the years now already. Um, but at the end, of course, it's a parameter. It's like it's depending on the parameters of the user parameters. Um, so um, if you put in good values, then you could get good results. But sometimes it's really because we are also just adding uh, costs, right? Uh, so if the if the cost parameters are good, then you're also adding ending up with a good um, cost result and cost quality cost analysis, so to say. And we try to support the user that he finds good values, but it's, as we said, it's not so easy. Um, can the map interface simulate more than one energy center? <laughs> Only a very good question, perfect. Um, so yeah, you can have more than one energy hub, uh, at least kind of. So yes and no, sorry, yes and no. Um, so you can only define one energy hub explicitly, but you can have buildings that, um, that feed in um, heat decentrally, so, so like a prosumer building. And if you have like a second energy hub and you would like to put some um, heat into the network from another site uh, where, the, where it's not the energy hub, then you can also define that in the building and, and define it as a cooling demand and then put the, um, the heat into the, into the network. So, and then simulate basically a prosumer building. So there's kind of a workaround to have uh, multiple energy hubs. Um, explicitly not, but uh, as a workaround, you can uh, model that. But that's also a point that we would like to address in the future. Um, how do you calculate the floor area from the GIS data? Um, yeah, we, right now we take the um, area data from the um, from the OpenStreetMap. So we have the uh, geometry, and then we make some assumptions. So we calculate, uh, we take some factors to calculate the usage or the floor area actually. Um, depending on the on the height of the building, um, it depends a little bit how good the quality of the data is from the OpenStreetMap. In some parts, it's really good, um, and you already get very nice uh, results. But of course, the data is not everywhere very good, so you should always check again and and see um, if it's really the data that you would expect for uh, when you just load the data into the map. Uh, we cannot guarantee for that. It's sometimes really not good data, sometimes good data. So you should uh, try to check uh, to check that. Um, how accurate are the results? Yeah, very good question. Difficult to answer. It really depends on the uh, use case. We have many use cases where we had very good feedback about it. At the end, we are just doing the calculation um, based on the parameters that we input. If the parameters that we input are wrong, then we get wrong results, obviously. Um, and um, and the MLP optimization, so we are using MLP optimization for the energy hub, uh, not for the network optimization. Um, and there we have the uh, typical limitations. So we have um, uh, energy balances, of course, and the, the second law of thermodynamics that we ensure that it's correct. But um, yeah, we have quasi-static energy balances. If I define an area to add different buildings, recognize all buildings as one, how can I solve this problem? Um, so yeah, um, I saw this as well in some cases, uh, and that's one of the things that we will refine in the, uh, for the version three. Um, if you find a problem, that's maybe the most important answer. If you find a problem where you say, oh, it's not working in this area, why is it not working? Please send us a screenshot and say, okay, I did this here and it's not working because this really helps us to uh, to find the uh, the parts where it's not working that we can refine these 
um, yeah, not general cases, but these very specific cases. Um, so yeah, um, many questions, perfect. Um, but we have a few minutes left, maybe I can answer some of them. Um, I would like to give a premise for industrial buildings. So we have a few new, new building types um, uh, included in the next, in this version now. There's also something like production that was a frequent uh, question from your side. Um, and uh, you can, uh, now I lost it, uh, suggest that. Yeah, and if you have process heat, you can, sometimes you can uh, model it as uh, domestic hot water because you have two options to model the heat demand. Uh, space heating as well as domestic hot water. And if you have an industrial site, you sometimes can say, okay, uh, and you have a process heat uh, demand, then you can use the domestic hot water as a process heat because you just have a, you can define the building, uh, the temperature of the temperature level of the demand as well as the demand profile. Um, all right, so um, no, we don't have a noise analysis for, uh, for the heat pumps. That would be nice maybe for version three, for version 4.0. Um, how are the heat profile generated? Yeah, that's also good. Uh, we have the um, frequently, ans uh, frequently asked question page uh, where we also have many uh, answers to these questions. For example, how do you calculate the profiles? And we have a document page, document page, documentation page online where you can get also um, answers to these questions because they're not specific to version three. I will skip it a little bit and they are very uh, extensive to answer. Um, and yeah, I will try to answer the other questions later on if we have some time left, uh, because I would like to show you my last slides uh, before we end up here. Um, let me jump into my slides again. Um, so, and I skipped a few questions because uh, they're already on these slides. So please, uh, if you want to uh, use the beta version um, to test it, and please send us uh, um, maybe uh, cases where it's not working with the, uh, with loading the building data, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, some limitation is not 100% stable. It's working re really fine, I think, uh, but not, I cannot guarantee for anything uh, for the beta version. Um, it's not 100% tested, I would say 99%, but uh, not 100%. Um, and there's one important limitation for the beta version. So until end of September, you cannot save the project permanently. They will be saved until end of September, but then we need to delete them. Um, so you can um, play around with it and, and save it for some days or weeks. Um, but at the end, we cannot um, take them, uh, the projects that you put into the beta version to the final version. You can also create a user account if you want to um, create a free demo license account uh, and then you can also save the project uh, at least for some days or weeks uh, and then uh, play around with it. Um, if you are using it right now during the workshop, uh, it may have some uh, longer loading times and calculation times because if 50 people are using it right now, then it, uh, the beta version is not the strongest server. It, have some, it may have some delay. Just try it after the workshop or maybe tomorrow, and then it will uh, just work fine. Um, there's also a limitation about the number of buildings. That was also a question in the chat. Um, so you can, um, it, it's better to have like 50, I think even a bit more is working, um, but um, not very, very large districts. So if you take uh, half of Berlin and it's not uh, working um, for the full version, we try to uh, support 500 buildings, um, around 500 buildings. So that you can really, um, yeah, also model larger districts. Um, yeah, and that's what I already uh, explained here. Which formats can you use for uploading data? GeoJSON, shape files, geo package files, and the important remark: uh, if you have a file that is not working as you expected, um, please, if you can, uh, from privacy reasons, if you can. Uh, send us one of the files uh, that are problematic and we will um, make sure that uh, it's working fine uh, with the final version. Um, yeah, and one uh, slide more about uh, another topic like uh, diversity factor. You said you saw that you have different dimensioning methods that you can use for the pipe sizing. 
Um, and of course, there are different uh, heuristics about diversity factors available across Europe, across worldwide, I would say. Um, we implemented some of the German guidelines, winter, for example, and I saw, for example, in the Netherlands, we have the ISSO 7 standard that you can use for calculating the diversity factor. Um, if in your country there's also something available, or if you know something that is available for other countries, um, please give us a, send us an email with a hint uh, where, you can, where we can find the data, and we are really happy to um, add here more calculation methods for also other countries. Um, so if you know a standard or a guideline in your country, uh, please just uh, send us an email. Um, yeah, in the last uh, one of the last slides. Uh, so what's the schedule? Um, I already mentioned it. Um, as one of the last features, we will do the 5 GDHC sizing. So right now we are completely supporting the four fourth generation district heating networks. Um, with central pumps, um, and we also support 5G DHC with central pumps. But now, in the next one and uh, one or two weeks, probably we will add the 5G DHC sizing with decentral pumps, so with decentral heat pumps, um, because the yeah the sizing, as you know, is a little bit different than compared to the fourth generation. And then we will test a lot uh, during uh, September uh, this month, and then uh, end of September, beginning of October. Um, I don't not have the date exactly right now, uh, we will then uh, put it completely online that you can also uh, save the project permanently and then uh, really use it for, for working. And yeah, for the ones who are already using the previous version, of course, there's a, a complete free update uh, for the for the next version that's, that's as always. Um, yeah, and uh, one last important slide, uh, almost last important slide, um, so if you uh, would like to keep up to date uh, with our development, uh, please follow us on, on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, we have many different um, posts here about features, new features that are coming in, video tutorials and so on. Um, if you would like to get updates not so frequently, like not two times a month, for example, but maybe only two times a year or maybe four times a year, uh, more or less like this, then uh, please don't hesitate to subscribe to our newsletter. Then you also get the most important updates, for example, when the new version is online. Um, and we also have a YouTube channel where we put uh, regularly new um, video tutorials and where we will also upload this, um, this um, workshop here um, and um, yeah, publish new videos about NPRO. Um, so that are the most important um, resources. Um, and maybe what's, uh, what's the time? Yeah, we have some minutes left. Uh, maybe I will um, skip the last part, I think, um, the feedback on the workshop, because maybe I will just try to answer the last questions in the chat um, and um, have a look what was open there. Um, so what did we have? Um, um, so um, the, the comment about researchers, so academia, uh, people from academia can use it for free. Uh, you can register with the academic uh, version, uh, with the academic license, and then model the things that uh, that I just showed. Um, that, oh, we don't want to see a window. I hope you saw it. Um, that, 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 that. Is there anything other important? Not so much. Um, is there a possibility to show details of the calculation for different network parts in the tool? Um, I'm not getting the completely the question, but you can visualize it like I showed in the in the map. You can visualize many different uh, physical parameters for all the different network sections, and then go into the details and see okay at which. Uh, at which part is is uh, is the mass flow um, and the flow rate in which condition, so to say. Um, so, and we will probably also extend this visualization features in the future in one of the future versions. All right, um, we are almost done from the time, so I think I would um, uh, skip the feedback the feedback uh, section and uh, just thank you very much for your. Uh, attention. Uh, we had uh, we have still 57 people uh, joining us today. 
Uh, it was a pleasure to show you version 3.0. Um, and please subscribe to our newsletter or to LinkedIn, then you will see when it's online, the new version. And if you have suggestions or comments or anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. We have a long list and we will always organize the feedback and then um, implement the next features according to your feedback. So um, yeah, thank you very much. Have a great uh, afternoon wherever you are right now. And um, yeah, see you next time.